On May 14, 1988, two friends were walking along a creek when they came across a rock that had strange markings on it. The family of one of the kids believed that the rock ended up giving them luck to the point that it helped them alter their financial future. Welcome to another installment of Black Sight Files from Unsolved Mysteries. Today we're going to be looking at the case of the Mystery Rock. Now, I'm going to go out on record here, ladies and gentlemen. I do not believe in luck that much. I think what it was was that this family just simply made some good business decisions that ultimately paid back in the very end. However, this is ultimately for you to decide. Was the family ultimately lucky because of this rock? Or could it be just simply that the rock had some graffiti on it? And uh, that basically they they made their own future. That is ultimately for you to decide. And we're going to be hearing about this case right after the commercials. These commercials from the 1990s. The power glove for your NES. Now you and the games are one. <laughs> Everything else is child's play. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all having a great start to your weekend. It is currently 10.56 a.m. on the 15th of September 2024. It's actually a pretty cool uh, September Sunday here, you know, in the city of Kelso, Washington. I got laundry done, so of course, let's get on with, you know, with the uh, sundry, sun, sundry, Sunday tradition ladies and gentlemen if you are new to this series this is basically where we go to the unsolved mysteries wiki and we will look up the case of the mystery rock i will have the computer uh read off the transcript of this case and i'll give you my thoughts as always i am joined here by my secretary her name is jasmine and i do not realize did not realize that my camera was the i was this small let's Let's enhance it a little bit. There you go. Or enlarge it. Enhance is the wrong word. Enlarge. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so, but yeah, so let's get on with it, shall we? So just so those to those who are new may not know, basically, uh, the program sometimes acts up. So I may have to read a little bit of this. It's just based on how the program acts. So, yeah. So the uh, title of this case is Mystery Rock. The name is Mystery Rock. This fill in the ca uh, case type of unusual phenomenon. Uh, location was Port Angeles, Washington, and the date was May 14th, 1988. Okay, so let me make sure I got everything. Okay, everything looks good. Let me check my, make sure that I have, okay, I got my headphones selected. So that's all good. I'm going to, I'm just going to start off with, this is actually a very quick case. I mean, as you can see, it's not that long at all. So we're going to just see if we can, I'm just going to see if it'll actually go all the way down to here. Okay. Like this is probably going to be like a four minute case at the, at the most. Let's now please work, please, please. I'm begging you. Please. Just two days later, the John. Wow, wow! It could not even do that. Okay, let's let, let's go a little bit smaller then. Let's go a little bit smaller. If it doesn't work at all, I may have to read details okay. on Saturday, okay, May fourteenth, nineteen eighty-eight. Thirteen-year-old Jamie Parks and his friend, Trevor Johnson went into the woods in Washington state near the Canadian border and found a bizarre rock with strange, cryptic, alien-like drawings on it. They found a rock that was basically had been vandalized, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, I, I've always thought it was more vandalized than actual hieroglyphics. Uh, but yeah, they found a, a, a graffiti, a, a vandalized rock. Nothing new, ladies and gentlemen. You may keep moving on. Mm -hmm. 
Markings on rock probably recent. Wow. Oh my God. Seriously? The program is just not working with me today. Okay, where did I where did I leave off? Um da, da, da. Okay. Oh, it's right here. Okay. I'm just gonna I'm gonna have to read it. I'm gonna have to read it, at least for a little bit. Okay. Trevor told his parents, Steve and Patty, about their discovery. At the time the Johnsons were struggling to pay the bills and risking everything on a small uh dress shop that was not opening that was not wait dress shop that was opening in a new mall patty took a second job as receptionist to help pay for the rent while steve worked as a prison corrections officer you would think that a prison corrections officer would get paid a pretty nice chunk. Now, you got to remember, this is back in 88, where uh, cost of rent was a little bit lower than what it is now. So you'd think that somebody who was a corrections officer, uh, you know, who was a corrections officer could have possibly earned enough to pay rent. Yeah. Uh, she later quit the job to open the store. However, this backfired when construction on it fell behind. After... Uh, Learning of the rock, Steve hiked to the spot with Trevor and was also interested in it. Okay, let's see if it'll all work this time. Come on, please. Please. Come on, I know you want to do it. Markings on rock probably recent. Wow, what is it with this? I'm just going to check to see if... Does it need an update or something? I didn't check to see if there was an update. Is there an update? Nope, it's all up to date. It's just the program has always been shit. Okay, so I'll continue on reading. Just two days later, the Johnson's luck began to change for the better. Their dress shop was completed and begun to flourish. Eventually, they also acquired a movie theater and other shops within the mall. They were also able to acquire a new home. They finally attained uh, prosperity and had that had eluded them for years. They believe their turnaround was due to finding the rock. However, an archeologist disagrees. After he studied it, he determined that the markings were not made by American Indians, or that they were, yeah, they were not made by American Indians as commonly believed and that they date to the 20th century at its earliest. They were vandalized, ladies and gentlemen. It's like literally what I've been saying. They're vandalized. Hold on, let me just scroll up. Okay. Whatever the origin of the rock, the Johnsons have been grateful to Trevor and Jamie Parks for finding it while exploring. Extra notes. This case first aired on the November 23rd, 1988 episode. The movie theater seen in the segment advertised the 1988 film Willow. This was the first one that the Johnsons sold to audiences when they acquired the theater. The results are unsolved, and then we got a couple links. That is it, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, this was a very quick case. I mean, not that much to it at all. Uh, here, here, I'm going to go click on the pics. Okay, we got a pic of The Rock. I think it was, like I said, I think it was just graffiti, if you ask me. But, you know. And then we have Patty and Steve Johnson, uh, who, you know, was mentioned in this story. So that is it, ladies and gentlemen. I just want to say thank you to Jasmine for joining us. You know, wait, hold on. Let's... And we will see her next time. But, yeah, so that was it for the mystery rock stay tuned and i will be right back with my final thoughts what brings a cool cat like you to this side of the sea wow this totally awesome way oh, 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 oh. oh now i need a really rad breakfast to help get me back home then follow your nose to fruit flavor it goes smell the natural orange lemon and cherry flavors of kellogg's fruit loops most tubular a most delicious part of this complete breakfast mm, the fruit loops are excellent another bowl hey that'd be gnarly dude that means yes doesn't it does this make sense though looks like a secret message <laughs>
you can send and receive secret messages with a Rescue Ranger secret decoder. Two free in Kellogg's Fruit Loops. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all had a great time uh, hearing my thoughts about this case. It is now time for my final thoughts. This was a quick case. I, I acknowledge that. I didn't realize how quickly it would be. You know, sometimes Unsolved Mysteries just likes to get out a quick ditty for us. You know, like, you know, here you want a quick, quick mystery? Here you go. With that said, do I believe that this case was all about luck? Do you think, do I think that luck ultimately turned this family's fortune around? No, no. I believe that if we do good in the world, we get rewarded. If we do poorly in the world, we get punished. What I think it was, was I think that this family was, uh, they, they were basically kind of knocked around for quite a while and they lost confidence in themselves. What I think ultimately happened was that, uh, as it was mentioned in the case that they, you know, they started having a lot of problems when the construction of their clothing, little clothing shop fell behind. What it could have been was that whatever was holding up the construction company that it finally the issue resolved itself and because of that the construction company was able to finish the shop and the family would i feel that the family could have been really determined they were determined to get make this business a success and it was via their hard work that you know their their business began to prosper it was because of their hard work that they were able to buy the theater and via that the, some of the other stores that were in the mall i do not think that this was a case of a rock with uh graffiti on it and i sure as do not believe that it was an issue of luck with that all said i am glad to hear that the family were able to turn their luck or not their luck turn their fortunes around it sounds like that they were kind of hit pretty hard. So, you know, if they did, the, if they put the time in, then they deserve to be rewarded. You know, but that is it, ladies and gentlemen. We are now done. We are done with season one, episode nine of Unsolved Mysteries. Uh, you know, if I had a soundboard, we'd I'd do like a have like a clapping sound. You guys are the reason I continue to do this. I I love going back and re reliving some of these cases with everybody. And because of that, since this is the final ep or final uh, case or final episode of, or yeah, final case of season nine or season one, episode nine, I thought I would go back and give you my thoughts about like what I thought were some of the big cases of this episode. So here, let's do this. Turn this off and then we'll do this. Okay, so this season, or this uh, episode, had a total of four cases. However, one of those cases I broke into two parts just based on how long the case was and the fact that there were two individual Unsolved Mysteries wiki entries. So we're going to start with the case, you know, all these cases were in order of the episode. Okay, so the first case that was covered in Season 1, Episode 9, was the uh, case of Kurt Sova. Kurt Sova, basically, he died of uh, mysterious circumstances. His body was found in an empty lot near where he was last seen at a party. Out of all these cases, this is the one that really kind of stuck out the most to me because of the fact that there was also recently, I think it was in one of the earlier episodes, I'd say the earlier episodes or an upcoming episode, there was a, uh, a teenager named Kurt McFall, and he also died under mysterious circumstances all the way in California, uh, San Francisco, California, if I remember correctly. So this is why this case kind of sticks to me. It's that first name. But yeah, so it, this is a case that has not been solved, and I think it never will be. I hope it will be. That's the purpose of these uh, videos that I like to produce is just to try and keep the light shined on these cases because as uh you know as the old saying goes maybe you know how uh you know what can happen maybe you have answers to this case you know what i'm trying to say after the case of kurt sova we had melvin and daniel nellis this one was really confusing to me and i should have i won't go on the go out and say i should have re-watched the case because i thought the case was about uh 
I thought that Melvin was originally looking for Daniel Nellis. And I, like I said, that was my fault. I didn't re watch the case recently, you know. But it turned out that these are just two people that another person was looking for. So I got a little bit confused. And I'll be honest, out of all these cases in this episode, this one really doesn't, you know, this is, you know, like if uh, Kurt Silva was like at the top, top tier, this case, you know, be a little bit further down. I'm not saying the case and the people are bad. It's just this really did not keep my attention. I'm glad that they were able to find each other, but it's not one of the cases that I constantly think about, uh, you know, every day of my life, you know. After that, we have two, uh, the, uh, the case I broke into two parts. I called it the Franciscan Connection because of the fact that we had two priests, Father Ronaldo Rivera, and Father John Kerrigan, who uh, one was murdered brutally and the other disappeared and was never found. They belonged to the same order of Catholics known as Franciscans. And they're wondering if that there could have been some uh, sort of link between these two victims. Uh, yeah, this right next to Kurt Sova, this case is right up there. Yeah, I think what I think it was was I think that. Uh, Father Ronaldo Rivera was an, uh, basically he was, there was a hit, but I don't think he was meant to be the one that was, uh, supposed to have been executed. I think he was, uh, like an innocent victim. I think the actual person who was supposed to have been, uh, uh you know, who had the hit put on him possibly was Father John Kerrigan because it was revealed. Let's see here. Uh, let's, let's see here. It was revealed that he basically, his name was on a list of uh, priests who have done some pretty heinous things to children. So what I think it was, was I think that somebody, either a victim of Father John Kerrigan or uh, a loved one of that victim, decided to get some justice that's what i think ultimately happened but ultimately that's just me it's ultimately up to you or yeah pretty sorry, you what uh you, you're gonna believe what you got you're gonna believe in that's what i encourage you know and then finally we have the mystery rock and th this is down there i i don't i don't think it was luck i don't i don't think it was luck i don't sure so don't think that it was a rock with uh hippie symbols graffiti onto it i just don't i don't i'm glad the family turned their luck i don't want to say luck because that makes me sound like i'm glad that the family was able to turn their fortune around nobody should uh have to you know s struggle through life that you know but it sounds like what it was was that this family they they applied themselves and they were basically rewarded for it you do good you you know you get rewarded you do poorly you get punished but that's about it ladies and gentlemen that was the case of or that was the uh that was hey let's switch back over to this there you go that was my uh overall thoughts about what we saw in season one episode nine of of uh, unsolved mysteries and that's about it we are now at the end of the show as always if you like what you watched feel free to click that subscribe button feel free to click the like and the bell and you will be alerted when i release new content i will see you next time ladies and gentlemen my name is jeff aka Jeekers, and I will see you uh, for season one, episode 10 of Unsolved Mysteries, uh, Black Sight, and Files from Unsolved Mysteries. Jeez, I fucked that all up. Uh, you know, anyway, take it easy, everybody. Peace out. Put down that joystick and get ready to ride. It's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. I'm Mario. My brother Luigi and I are hot. Watch us take on the baddest bad guy in town, King Koopa. He's got his hooks out for Princess Toadstool, but we're gonna stop him cold. The Super Mario Brothers Super Show. It's awesome. Super Mario, tomorrow at 7.